Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Today's rundown is going out to Salvation73, who enjoyed our Starlink toy unboxing yesterday. Said, grown men playing with toys? Why wasn't I invited? Well, you are today, because this rundown is all yours. All hail the king, because the next Black Panther movie will have the same leader on the throne, Wakanda forever. Marvel and Disney have closed a deal to get Black Panther director and co-writer Ryan Coogler back to helm the sequel. The first film vastly exceeded expectations to earn more than $1.3 billion worldwide, so a sequel was guaranteed, but we didn't know until now if the studio would be able to get Coogler back behind the camera. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the negotiations took a little longer than usual because Coogler's team wanted to get the best deal possible, similar to the negotiations that happened between DC and Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins before she signed on for her sequel. Marvel has it announced a release date for the next Black Panther movie, but it's expected to begin shooting next year and hit theaters in 2020. We, uh, it's gonna be a bit strange though, because we don't know if Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther is alive still, right? Because he just died in The Last Avengers, right? Didn't Thanos... Yeah, we know he's coming back. That movie was so huge. It's going to be a massive, massive hit again, I would expect. But I think the expectations are enormous. With Ryan Coogler, he's setting a name for himself. He's a terrific filmmaker. See Creed. It's going to be interesting to see who gets a little bit more front and center attention in the next Black Panther movie. Because that was one of my favorite things about the first one was how he spread the love around. And he gave everybody lots of great moments. Black Panther 2 can't come soon enough. The new Hitman game is going to let you take on your friends in a whole new way. Developer IO Interactive has announced that the new game, Hitman 2, will have a one versus one competitive multiplayer mode, the first in the franchise. Known as Ghost Mode, it will see two players dropped into the same map with the goal of taking out specific targets, and the first to eliminate all of them wins. Unfortunately, this means you won't actually be trying to assassinate each other, and you won't even be able to interact with each other, but still, this is the biggest form of multiplayer yet in the traditionally single-player franchise. No word on when the inevitable Battle Royale mode will be announced. Hitman 2 lands next month. Let's hope to God that there is never a Hitman Battle Royale game. Okay, please. That would be crazy. Although, that's kind of John Wick in a way, right? That's the plot of John Wick right there. So, yeah, I guess that could work. Everybody's out for each other. Yeah, that could that could be cool. Scratch that. We want a Hitman Battle Royale game, so please make that. Um, I think uh, this Hitman franchise is terrific. It's certainly carved out its own kind of niche in the world out there. I think IO Interactive is an incredible developer that's really uh, done a good job at sort of showcasing what they're best at with their story-driven, narrative-driven, um, and also uh, games with lots of choice along the way as well. They give the players a lot of agency in those titles. There is, you know, a scripted kind of direction and a sort of best path kind of thing in a lot of their titles, but they're very cool, and Hitman 2 looks great, and the whole story of IO Interactive getting the rights back and Warner Brothers picking them up and, uh, uh, you know, publishing this next title, all very good news. And speaking of playing with your friends, the eternal damnation of hell isn't enough to stop you from joining your friends on other consoles. Cross-platform multiplayer is coming to Diablo 3. Speaking with Australia's Business Insider, an unnamed Blizzard representative revealed that they're actively working to bring cross-play to the game now that Sony has finally started allowing it on the PS4. This would allow PlayStation 4 owners to play Diablo 3 with their friends on the Xbox One, and it would also include the PC and upcoming Switch versions of the game. The Switch version lands next month, but no word yet on when crossplay will arrive. Looking ahead, Blizzard has hinted that all new Diablo projects are in the works, with a possible announcement coming as early as BlizzCon, which kicks off November 2nd. Uh, that would be a pretty damn good time to talk about the next Diablo, wouldn't it? Or some kind of Diablo-related thing, as, especially if they're trying to get people interested in picking up that Switch version. Diablo 3's been around a long time. It's still a very cool game. Lots of people play it like crazy. There's lots of different uh, ways to just keep you know, uh, getting uh, content out of that title as well. It's not like you just finish it and then you walk away from it. It's really fun with multiplayer as well. I can't wait to play the thing on the Switch. I think it's going to be a great fit for that machine. Um, but this is all good news. See what kind of, you know, bring, the, you see what kind of bringing the world together you do, Sony, when you open up the, the gates and you say, yes, we can allow crossplay. It's very cool. It's like a kumbaya moment. I love it. And Diablo 3 isn't the only hellish hack and slash game franchise in town. THQ Nordic has unveiled their post launch DLC plans for Darksiders 3. The new game will be getting two expansions known as The Crucible and Keepers of the Void, each offering new puzzles, weapons, and enemies. THQ Nordic hasn't said how much, though 
though cost, but we do know that they'll be included in all three of the game's collector's editions, the cheapest of which starts at 120 bucks Canadian. The fact that THQ Nordic is announcing their DLC plans now indicates that they have high hopes for the game. It's one of their biggest new projects, with Darksiders being one of the biggest franchises that they bought from the original THQ when it went bankrupt in 2012. Darksiders 3 is being developed by Gunfire Games, a new studio founded by former members of original Darksiders developer Vigil Games, which went under with the original THQ. As for when the DLC for Darksiders 3 will arrive, release windows haven't been named. The main game lands November 27th. I am very excited to jump into Darksiders 3. We played a little bit of the original Darksiders uh, in our Let's Play and chat, and everybody jumped in and said, oh my god, I love this game. People like to sort of uh, paint the doom and gloom in their stories about the video game industry, and we hear about studios like Capcom Vancouver and Telltale closing down, but every once in a while we get fantastic news, like members from an original development team getting uh, the chance to finish a trilogy that they were all working towards, and this is exciting stuff. November 27th is the date, and I can't wait to review Darksiders 3. Speaking of DLC, one of the most controversial things about Destiny 2 is finally being changed. Bungie has announced that the latest expansion, Forsaken, which was released last month, will no longer require players to buy the previous two batches of DLC in order to play. Until now, if you bought Forsaken, you could only start playing it if you also bought both of the previous DLC packs, Curse of Osiris and Warmind, even if you didn't want them. Needless to say, this created a huge backlash, which didn't help Forsaken win over new players. Starting next week, anyone who buys Forsaken will also get Curse of Osiris and Warmind at no extra cost, and anyone who's already bought them will get new in-game items and consumables as a makeup gift. Going forward, Bungie plans to release two more expansions over the next year, although they haven't said what else you might need to buy in order to access those. That's a little dig right there. Uh, Destiny 2, I think, it, it's kind of struggling a little bit in the um, in popular consciousness out there. It came out, I loved it, I thought it was really cool, I played through uh, Curse of Osiris and Warmind, and I was like, okay, I had enough. Now, I have started Forsaken I've jumped in uh, and I've dug what I've played so far, but yes, there is a an element of uh, repetitious gameplay. It's great gameplay, but you're doing a lot of the same stuff over and over again. It's really got to focus more on storytelling and also mixing up the gameplay elements. Give us more things like racing and flying ships and uh, you know vehicular combat and things like that. It can't just be the run and gun shooter experience and the collectathon that it is, which is really fun. Don't take that as dismissing it. it just needs a little bit more. Players will soon be able to reconquer the classic Command and Conquer games. EA has announced that they're working on new remastered versions of the original games in the iconic RTS franchise. EA producer Jim Vassala made the announcement on the official Command and Conquer Reddit page, saying that they're remastering the classic PC games and hope to have them out in time for the franchise's 25th anniversary, which will be in 2020. He hasn't said how many of the classic games will be getting the remastered treatment, but either way, this should be welcome news for longtime fans. Many CNC players were disappointed when they learned that the all-new game, Command & Conquer Rivals, is being made only for mobile devices, so remastering the classic games will give PC players something of their own. Rivals is currently in alpha testing, and it's probably going to be the most successful Command & Conquer game of all time, <laughs> because uh, mobile has a, a very good way of hooking people in and being live and, and sort of getting that player spending engagement, which can be gross, but it can also be incredibly profitable and be good for game companies so that they can invest in things like remastering classic games like this. But yeah, it's really weird how Command & Conquer has sort of disappeared from the PC landscape. When you look at classic EP episodes, you can see Command & Conquer popping up on a regular basis, you know, 97, 98, 90, you know, it was there all the time and we used to review them on uh, PC and we reviewed console ports and stuff. So yeah, this is cool. This is an exciting way to celebrate the 25th anniversary of a vaunted franchise franchise that's been a little bit forgotten. So good on you, EA. That's some good EA news right there. And that's going to wrap us up for the rundown today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We'll be back again on Monday with a brand new EP Live. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend. Remember to check out the other content that we've been making. And if you're so inclined, you can uh, hit that join button and become an EPN member. Have a great weekend, everybody. Play forever.